Welcome back to my lecture, how to alleviate the symptoms of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. We're gonna talk about the paleo diet or a version of what I give my clients as nutritional advice. This is a very important and highly effective part of the solution, I think. All right, now, for those who are not familiar with this, um, the concept of the paleo diet or the caveman diet is all about the following. The world was here first, right? I'm pretty sure like carrots were here before we were here. Uh, and then we evolved, monkeys and so on and so forth, and it took millions of years to adapt a certain organism around what was already here. Food, lifestyle, the way everything works, we uh, were adapted and evolved around that. That's what our designs is for, our genes. All right, so the question is, should we be eating what we ate at that time? Or are we already a little bit adapted? It's been 10,000 years since we like, did agriculture and stuff like that. And then actually the last 200 years, we started changing more and more, so we have 50 years, a lot of sugars in there, a lot of new things. And well, the answer is we adapted a little bit, a little bit. So we're still mostly built for this caveman, but we do have some variations depending on who you are. Like literally you could be a little bit adaptive towards, let's say for instance, higher carb eating. I'm adapted a little bit to higher carb eating. If I stop eating all carbs altogether, I will lose too much weight. My mother, however, really has a problem with carbs. So she gets overweight when she eats too much carbs. So she has to cut that out completely. We have genetic variations, but they're new and they're only like specifically about one thing. Like for instance, like lactose intolerance, we're gonna talk about it in a minute. So we have some adaptation, so pay attention. Things that work for you will not work for the other person and vice versa. I'm just gonna say it again because of these variations, but mostly some, like most things, we are still like we were in those times. For instance, a good omega-3, omega-6 balance because we've been eating that forever and ever and our body just needs that. It can, can't make it out of anything else. Um, so burgers, sugars, stuff like that, maybe in a million years will be, it will be the healthiest thing to eat a fast food meal. But right now our body just doesn't understand it yet. It doesn't have like the tools to handle that situation. And that could be anything from getting obese from it or diabetes from it to gut problems. Okay. Good. Let's uh, take some culprits. Let's look at them. Let's do uh, dairy, lactose in dairy. Um, just to be clear, lactose is milk sugar. It's a sugar type found in milk. It's not milk protein. So if you drink a glass of milk, there's a lot of lactose in there. Eat some cheese, the lactose in there, the milk sugar has already been fermented by the bacteria, that's what they do. That's how you make cheese. So the lactose is lower, but the milk protein in cheese is higher. So keep that in mind, lactose intolerance, milk protein allergy, two different things. Many of my clients have both. All right, uh, I'm just gonna throw some uh, studies in there. Um, hope you can read them, hope you agree with them. If not, and you're open for any discussion, just email me. Look at this, um, good study has been done. Um, and here they say basically, okay, during adulthood, the ability to digest lactose goes down with everybody and that can cause problems. So there's only certain, certain type of people who are lactose persistent and actually most people lose that ability to some degree or heavily. Pretty logical because we're the only animals that I know of that actively consume a lot of dairy after they've been like an infant and then also from another animal. I mean, unless maybe give your like a cat a saucer of milk, I have no idea 
what animal does this. So mm. more of a problem is, it also states in this same study, okay, it's really difficult to diagnose this. We can do the genetics part, but the genetic part isn't the only thing. So lactose intolerance in your genes doesn't say everything. And now here it comes, bottom line, the bottom line, literally the bottom line, inflammatory bowel disease is one of the causes that will make you more lactose intolerant by itself, even if you're genetically designed for it. So what am I saying? Might want to leave that out. All dairy out. This is one of those, this is the free advice moment that I'm saying, this will not harm you. We don't need dairy that much. I'm going to say it out loud. I really mean that. You're worried about calcium and your bones. You should have a good status of vitamin D, possibly even vitamin K, but there's enough calcium in all vegetables, animal products to get it in there. If not, where all those animals with osteoporosis and bad bones, they're not there. There's a different way to get it from them. All right. Milk proteins. Just quick, 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 quickly, a um, little science -y, sorry. Um, there are different um, proteins in milk and some are good, some are bad. We have this beta casein and this alpha casein and stuff like that uh, of A2 and A1 beta casein is what it's called. One of them is good, one of them we really are not good. It's okay, but the other one we're not responding well to. And how, now here's the problem, all domestic cows, say for like uh, the ones in India, I think they're a little bit better. They produce these bad caseins, the ones who are not responding well to. Goats produce even more of these bad caseins. So lactose-free milk, lactose-free cheese. If you have a milk protein problem, well, if you have gut problems, there's a there's a chance, um, leave all dairy out. I know there's a thing going on like goat and cow and maybe goat would be better. Yes, hormonal wise, maybe, but we're talking about something completely different here. So safe to say, leave that out. Okay, next one, omega-3, omega-6. I've been talking about it a little bit already, so let's get into it. We have two different types of fats. Omega-6, omega-3, uh, in the omega family, we also have omega-9, that's in olive oil, fine. But the omega-3, omega-6, this is where the problems lie. What is the problem? Omega-3 will decrease your inflammation. Just to keep it really simple, it does a million other things, but decrease your inflammation. And omega-6 will increase your inflammation. And by inflammation, I mean also inflammatory bowel diseases. So it's not the only substance that does it, but it's, it plays a big role in there. And we want it a lot about mm, one out of two. So, so maybe two, three times more omega-6 than omega-3, maybe one out of one and one, perfect. What is it right now? Depending on what study you read, somewhere between one to 25 times too much omega-6 compared to omega-3. That is a big, Big discrepancy. Omega-3 is way too low. We're not getting enough in there. And omega-6, we're getting tons in there. And we don't want that. I'm talking about for your brain health, for your gut health. I'm talking about uh, your neurons specifically, also in your, your, your extremities, um, Alzheimer's, um, let's see, stress, anxiety related stuff. Really, really important thing. And we're well, I stopped testing people if they're deficient because everybody was deficient who I tested, so to some degree. All right, the omega-3 and the omega-6. Let's do omega-6 first. We wanna get that lower because it also pushes away the little omega-3 that you're eating. Omega-6, these are the... Uh, the biggest sources, look at the middle one, the little uh, round graph. 70% of all the omega-6 we're eating, we're getting from vegetable oils. Yay, vegetable oils, the thing that is so good for us because there's the word vegetable in there, so it's good for us. No, 
Um, safflower, sunflower, corn seed oil, uh, seasoned peanut oil, soy oil, canola oil, flax seed oil. These have, on average, pretty high levels. Sorry, not flax seed, by the way. And walnut is also pretty good, uh, but the omega-6 is way high in sunflower oil, safflower oil, seed oil. Pinda oil, also very popular. This is a problem because everybody's thinking that these are healthy oils and they're not. So try to just, I, would, I wouldn't eat them at all. I don't eat them at all. I use other things I'm gonna talk about in a minute. Um, just don't, I would eat as little as possible. And many times there's in products, there's some sunflower oil, again, that sells, right? And you can put a little bag of chips and a little sunflower on there. And then you're like, oh, wow, great. It's not that amount. I'm talking about the big amounts. 70% of everything we're getting in there is from oils and margarines and shortenings. Then we have some from chicken, unfortunately, because chicken, well, especially if they don't move around and you give them a lot of uh, corn, which they do, and grains, they will get an omega-6 body fat composition. So also a little bit, but way less. We're talking about amounts here. It doesn't have to be perfect, once again. What do you do for a replacement? I would use olive oil. Olive oil doesn't have that much omega-6 in it. It has omega-9, that's pretty good. Um, there's also coconut oil that doesn't have uh, omega-6 as well, but coconut oil, don't use it too often. Just only when you do high temperature stuff, if you're gonna do that. Then a little bit of coconut oil, but don't do it every day or large amounts. It's, it's been, well, it does, mess around with your cholesterol a little bit after a while. So um, olive oil, just keep the temperature low. Olive oil isn't that great for uh, baking, uh, for, for high temperatures. So do it low temperature or put a little bit of water in there that the water will stop the boiling point and stuff like that until it's completely dissolved. Um, that's also healthy for other reasons, not to heat things too high. Okay. Um, Omega-3. Let's see what's in there. No, that was the next one. Let's do omega-3. Just, I don't have a picture. Omega-3 is fish. It's mostly fish, fatty fish. It is, omega-3 is everything that's been swimming or running or had some kind of exercise. If it's moving around an animal, then omega-3 is in there. Now, I'm sure there's a couple of vegans and vegetarians watching as well. And I want to give you good advice because I have nothing but respect for people who do not eat animals for animal cruelty reasons, other reasons. But the omega-3 is very important. Um, be careful. Flaxseed and stuff like that has omega-3, but it's not the DHA or APA that you're supposed to have. It's alpha linolenesure that's a pre-precursor to it. And we can't really put that into the right source of omega-3. So if you do do this, uh, algae um, supplements are out there with omega-3. Those are better than the, 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 the flaxseed and borage oil and stuff like that. For everybody else, if you do eat animals, mostly fatty fish, uh, poult uh, good poultry um, also has it. Um, Grass-fed cows, if they're not being marbled at the end of their life, just putting in a stable and then just not moving around. Um, don't trust the chicken that much. And take a supplement, the right amount of a supplement of these two, uh, DAA, these two. You cannot get around taking a supplement if you really want to have it high enough. Uh, and the right dose again. Huh? These supplements are just like medication. Take the right dose or else it will work or not work efficiently enough. All right, uh, let's do grains, gluten. Um, what's the problem with, with gluten? Um, they test it uh, and they, I mean, just regular doctors, no offense, they test it and it's great. They test if you have celiac disease and if you don't have it, look at this lab result. If it's under a hundred, this, the, the, these antibodies that you're producing if you have celiac disease. If it's under 100, you don't have celiac disease, it's fine to eat grains. I do not agree. Big surprise. Non-celiac gluten sensitivity is a thing. Look it up. It means that you 
on your way, maybe, or at least it means you do have some inflammation reaction towards gluten. It's just not enough to have like your entire inside gut lining being destroyed, which is the case with celiac disease, or you don't have the genetic predisposition to get celiac disease, but you're still annoyed by it. This is why so many people are already out there like, yeah, I don't know, I don't have celiac disease, but gluten, it's still a thing. So pay attention to that. This person, uh, one of my clients had 46 and 10. It's less than 100, but it's still too much anti-gliadine, anti-transglutaminase. You can forget about it. That's two antibodies that your body's producing if it doesn't like gluten. Okay. Some other allergies. I'm going to make it even worse. I'm sorry if I'm scaring people who are like, oh God, I got to leave these things out. Very important to leave certain things in there. Don't stop eating altogether. That's the worst thing you can do. But just to complete the story, there are also other allergies. Uh, these again are things that are or are not tested. Um, there are slow allergies and fast al and, and like acute allergies, EGA and EGE, whatever. So if you eat a strawberry and you swell up, that's a very obvious one, right? Allergy. But there's also slower ones and I'm afraid these slower ones are not commonly tested once again. Uh, egg is a very common one. Kiwi is a very common one. Or people who eat a kiwi in the morning just to go to the bathroom. Believe me, then you have an allergy against kiwis because your gut just wants to get rid of it. Well, then you can poop. Um, we also have on the right certain things you're not, you, uh, you can't be allergic to. It's called saponines and stuff like that. Um, there are also other food sources that can damage the inside of your lining as long as it's in too large amounts. For instance, the most common things are legumes and potatoes and stuff like that. They have certain saponines. And if you just ingest enough of those and you're already sensitive in your cells, the cells will explode, literally actually explode when enough saponines build into the cell membrane. Large amounts. We're not talking about having french fries once a week or something like that. We're talking about large amounts combined with these other things. So especially in the beginning when you're sensitive, it might be worth leaving out lectins and saponines, the bad lectins and saponines. Okay, and also other stuff like, like alcohol, you can and even the pill a little bit, but it's all uh, adding. Okay, last sheet. Very important, please pay attention to this disclaimer the most. Do not want to hurt anyone with these videos. This is the biggest warning of my lecture. Why not just leave these things out? Let's do it. Let's leave gluten out. Let's leave milk out. Let's leave these saponine things you've just been talking about out. Let's see what happens. I have had years of experience of people trying this on their own and it goes wrong. At least... 75% of the time. Why? You gotta know what you can eat. This is the biggest question. If I give a lecture at a company, they're like, but what do you eat then? And I'm like, that's the first question. We're gonna get to that. Uh, but it's not enough to just like me saying one recipe. Really gotta know what you're doing because you will have food deficiencies, macro deficiencies, like big things deficient and small things deficient. So be careful. If you do something like gluten, gluten, for instance, gluten is in everything nowadays. So if you're going to leave everything out, you need a lot to compensate for that. I get people after a month come back like, well, oh, I've left it out. I think my gut is a little less annoyed, but I feel like crap. So please be careful with that. Dairy, I'm sure is going to be fine. Uh, maybe vegans or, and sorry, veg vegetarians who still eat a lot of cheese. They're usually like looking for cheese because they're looking for fat and proteins and stuff like that. Maybe be a little bit careful for that deficiency as well because well, you already have like a little bit lower calorie intake. So be careful with that. But other than that, dairy fine. Other things, I would recommend doing it guided. Start with the dairy and see what happens. If you're already improving, then you're a believer and you can go on. Seek somebody out. Um... Are these healthy uh, paleo ratios for me? If you look up the paleo diet, you still get a lot of cow. I don't even like that that much. The cow part, I don't trust. I would go for poultry and fish more than cow. But also the ratios are low carb. 
but maybe you're thin already. I wouldn't do low carb. Maybe you're really stressed. I also wouldn't do low carb, especially not in the beginning, maybe later on, but in the beginning. Mm. So be careful. Um, is it the food that's causing the complaints? Some people, not a lot, but some people say, I've left this out, but it doesn't really do that much for me or just a little bit mm, 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 or nothing at all. I've mean, got to be honest with gut problems. It does work better than with other diseases, but other diseases, other complaints, autoimmune diseases, people say, yeah, I leave these things out, but nothing's happening. So parasites, digestive problems we're going to talk about next, stress, these are all like just a few of other things that can be the root cause or causes. And up next is this digestion. If you're going to change your diet to something like the paleo, something like the paleo, a lot of fats, a lot of proteins in there. These are hard to digest. Be careful. Then you get, I'm eating these healthy things, but I'm not digesting these healthy things. We're going to get more uh, fermenting, more rotting in our system. We're going to get like, like smelly poop and farts, and we're going to get more inflammation. So pay attention at least to the next video about digestion because the digestion is probably one of the biggest problems when you start eating healthier stuff which you might or might not be digesting properly okay good thank you so much for listening to this disclaimer it's not without cause good next up digestion